Okay, in this video, and it's going to be handheld, so a little bit shaky, we're going to talk about the Hem Holtz resonator switch or detector, if you will. For example, in the 1950s and 60s toys, Sonicon bus, which is what we have taken apart right here. This uh, plastic cover would be mainly there for manufacturing so they could stack the parts up without uh, damaging anything. But here is the Helmholtz resonator chamber and switch or detector, whichever terms you'd like to use. There's a uh, little piece of, see if I can get something to point with here. Well, I'll just use a pen. There's a this little piece right here, if it shows up, you can see it's just a hinged piece of metal that can flop down. One wire connects to that side of the circuit, the other part of the wire connects to the metal drum, and there's a little divot on this uh, diaphragm. So normally, because it's leaned back, and as you can see they made it adjustable, there's actually stops under there so they could ratchet it back however much they want. Anyway, the gravity pulls the two contacts together and that closes the switch. So normally, this is a normally closed switch. And the idea is that when a, a, f a sound, a frequency of the, a sound of the proper frequency enters the back of this, which is open, it causes a, a resonation which will make the diaphragm vibrate. And when the diaphragm vibrates, then the two little contacts will vibrate. So it goes to this relay. In this case, this is a double pull, double throw relay because they have a single motor that they want to be able to reverse. Um, normally, when that's connected, they want the motor to drive the vehicle in whatever direction. I can't really flip this over because I'm going to show you this. But basically, there's a motor driven drive on here that can rotate, but it also can drive, sort of like a bump and go and uh, when the motor is running one way it will drive the vehicle forward when the motor is reversed in direction it will not drive the vehicle forward ratchets lock up and it simply rotates and uh, by putting uh, the shaft goes up an antenna on top of the toy they can see which way the kid that's playing with it can see which way the bump and go is aiming so when they quit blowing the whistle then the bus will go in that direction anyway let's get back to it so the idea is that when the uh, diaphragm is not vibrating, this relay will normally be in the closed position. It's a super sensitive double pull, double throw relay. And when it does vibrate, at some point there won't be enough voltage there for the relay to stay closed and it'll open. So the relay not only acts as the switching device for reversing the motor, but it's also um, a threshold detector, a comparator, if you will. It, it'll, it will reach a point where it won't stay latched and, and opens, so it kind of gives you that clean comparator with hysteris built in. So uh, no transistors, no ICs, no tubes, it's all electromechanical, detects a specific tone, doesn't uh, get activated, activated by just any sound. So here is the little Hemholtz resonator switch that I built up, which is what I had inside the Sonicon robot up there. And uh, basically it's a small drum. It's sold as some sort of magnetic thing holder that you can buy at the dollar store. Cut an opening on the back side of it just like this one so that sound can get in. It already comes with a clear plastic front stretched on. That's my drum surface. So then I simply took a paper clip and made a loop in the front to contain the little finger so it can't ever get stuck, swing too far. That's what all this rigmarole on here is about, is just to contain that little finger so it can't get damaged or swing around where it might get stuck in an open position. And so I have one contact down here in the loop. The other contact is the one that's hanging. I have that going to one of my... Uh, uh, clock coils and a reed relay which then runs through a battery pack into this LED and again the idea will be when I blow this whistle then the vibrations of the dome even though you can see the LED is not flashing with my talking or anything but this whistle should be closely tuned to the resonant chamber of that Helmholtz so 
So that's the idea of how they work, how you can control something with a specific tone. You can actually make multiple chambers of different sizes and they'll all be tuned to different tones and if you had a, a slide whistle or multiple whistles of different frequencies you can control multiple things. And for example here is the patent. Originally was uh, sent out in 1955 and then it was actually reissued in uh, 1961 but uh, they're basically showing the uh, the chamber in this case they're not that they're showing a they're not really showing the diaphragm so much but they are showing the little floating connector now it comes down to the relay and in this case they're using a single pole double throw relay so they have to have uh, two separate battery supplies in order to reverse the motor direction and the actual toy when it was built as I explained they wanted to simplify it so it could run on just two D cells so in order to reverse your motor direction you gotta have a double pole double throw relay and since they were building a custom relay anyway one that would work at three volts one that was very sensitive why not just go ahead and make the double pole double throw and simplify the toy because packing in four D cell batteries in here would, would have been quite the job and pretty much a toy that runs on this kind of thing would have been D-cells back then because batteries were really crappy back in the 50s and early 60s carbon batteries they didn't give you but a few minutes of runtime. the whole resonator chamber like I say is mounted on a frame which allows them to adjust the tip which is your sensitivity control if you stood this straight up and down then the little plunger would just barely be touching so you can control that and, yet, and this whole uh, frame is mounted to the lower frame through rubber grommets to isolate it from the vibrations of the bus. And in my case, there I have little rubber grommets there, and you can actually see the grommet on the front of the robot, and there's one on the back that isolate mine, because I found it didn't work until I did isolate it. I turned mine, instead of having it facing forward, I turned mine in there sideways, because my robot is mainly moving forward and backward. I found out when I had the uh, sensor aiming forward like you're seeing it right here the starting and stopping the robot of course the inertia would make the little finger open and close and then that that's the same as issuing a command but by turning it sideways you're able to reduce that effect the other way they're able to reduce the effect uh, in their their toys here is they moved very slowly there wasn't a big uh, start stop inertia thing going on in the first place because it just kind of creeps along my uh, my robot moves quite a bit quicker. So there you have it. Your uh, Helmholtz resonator sound detector switch, whatever you'd like to call it. If you'd like to look up the patent yourself, it gives full descriptions. That's the patent number. Like I say, it was originally issued in 1955 and then it was, uh, here we are, and then it was reissued again in 1961. You can find it if you do a Google's patent search. It'll pop up. And there's some interesting reading because they have to describe how everything is intended to work. There's also a few other patents on it. There's another one that shows a uh, different way of designing the contacts. But what it just comes down to is just just think of a drum kit. If you had a tom or a snare and you were able to make a contact on top that would be turned on and off when the top of the drum vibrated. Same type thing.